Hello everyone and welcome back to Mastering the Basics of Surgical Technique. I'm Paul Shea and today we'll be reviewing advanced tips and tricks for instrument tying. Uh, this video is for learners who have already thrown instrument ties before. So if you have not, I'll, I'll include a few links below. Uh, there'll be introductory videos that others have uploaded to YouTube of instrument tying. I just recommend that you watch one, practice a little bit, before coming back here for learning advanced tips and tricks. Uh, the materials that you'll need to follow along with the video, you're only gonna need three things. You're gonna need a needle driver, you're gonna need a suture with a needle on the end, which might be hard to see, and something to sew into. I'm just using a rolled up white t-shirt uh, because it shows up better on the video later on. In terms of indications for instrument tying, it's a common technique that's used by plastic surgeons and in the emergency room. However, if it's unclear whether you should be throwing a one hand versus two hand versus instrument tie, I'd always defer to your resident or attending. Um, and finally, the types of suture and knots that we're gonna be throwing today, we're just gonna be doing simple interrupted suture, the most basic so that we can focus on our knot tying. And in regards to our knots, we're going to be doing squared knots, starting with one surgeon knot followed by four squared knots on top of that, uh, which is a very common closure technique used for tissues of low to intermediate tension. All right, on to the tips and tricks. Tip number one, and the most important tip, is staying calm. Uh, not only feeling calm, but making sure that your shoulders are relaxed and your elbows are by your side while you're working. I often find that when I'm starting something new, something awkward, I end up feeling agitated, I bring my shoulders up, I have my elbows out, and it makes it even more difficult for me to try to master these new techniques. So I just recommend that as you practice these new tips and tricks, that you mentally check in with yourself every so often saying, am I feeling calm? Are my shoulders relaxed? Are my elbows by my side? And if not, to make sure that you correct. Here I've changed the perspective of the camera to be my view looking down at my suture that I've passed through my rolled up t-shirt. Hopefully this will make it easier to follow along. The second tip of the video is going to be about the length of each end of the suture. I'm gonna call this end the free end and this end the needle end. The free end should be on the shorter end. Here I have it at around four to five centimeters long. This is short enough that I'll save suture. I can throw multiple knots with this single string of suture. Uh, it also makes it a little easier to throw knots. However, I need to make sure that it's not so short that I won't be able to throw enough knots and get a long enough tail. Uh, on the other end, the needle end, I make sure that I grab back around the length of my needle driver. This is around the ideal length for me to be able to wrap my suture around my needle driver. Um, any shorter, any longer makes it just a little bit more difficult. And so that's my second tip of the video, the lengths of each end of the suture. My third trick of the video is going to be how to wrap the suture around your needle driver. I've seen some videos online where they'll hold their needle driver up in the air, bring their suture up to them, and then use that needle driver to create their loops for their first surgeon's knot before coming down to that free end. I think a way that might be a little defter is instead of spinning your instrument around your suture and then having to reorient yourself as to where the tip of the needle driver is, if you actually spin your suture around the needle driver, you know where your tip is the whole time. So to be able to spin that suture around your needle driver, you can do it grossly by just moving your whole hand clockwise or counterclockwise. But in addition to that, you're able to spin the suture clockwise or counterclockwise in your fingers just by rolling your fingers. And so here, when I'm moving my hand grossly clockwise, I'll also put a little spin clockwise on my fingers. And that helps to set up that surgeon's knot. So in addition to using my suture to wrap around my instrument and my, instead of my instrument around the suture, 
I think positioning is key. So even though I know where my tip is the whole time, I want my instrument tip to be very close to the free end so that as soon as I wrap my suture around my instrument tip, I'm ready to grab the free end. So I'm actually going to hold it very close to the free end. And again, wrap my suture around the instrument and then it's a very small distance for me to grab that free end. And so that is my third tip of the video is how to wrap the suture around the needle driver. My fourth tip of the video is going to be where on the free end to grab with the needle driver after wrapping your suture around your needle driver. So I'm using the same tips that I just talked about with the last trick. And here, I'm going to make sure that I grab at the end of that free end. That way, when I pass my knot down, you can see that everything's laid down very nicely. I'll show you what happens if you grab in the middle or at the base of the free end and how it just doesn't lay down as well. So I come around wrapping that surgeon's knot, but instead I'm going to grab down at the base. When I pull through, you can see that instead of having that nice knot that laid, I end up with this loop. And so to eliminate that loop, you end up needing to use an instrument to pull the free end through. And that's something that you can avoid by grabbing at the end of the free end. And so that's my fourth tip of the video is where on the free end to grab with your needle driver. My fifth tip of the video requires that I undo that first surgeon's knot that we made. And I'm going to throw it one more time. So here I make the surgeon's knot by wrapping my suture around my instrument. I grab the far end of the free end. And as I tighten down this first knot, and this is only important on the first knot, I'm making sure to really tighten down by pulling my needle side away from the knot and keeping my free end on my instrument close to the knot. This makes sure that I preserve that short length that we created at the beginning. If instead I try to tighten down the knot by pulling the free end far away from the knot, you can see that I'm able to pull it and make it significantly longer than we intentionally set it at the beginning of the knot. And that's my fifth tip of the video, is how to ensure to keep your free end short on your first throw. My sixth and final technical tip of the video is to address what happens if you develop a tremor in your hand while you're throwing instrument ties. It's a very common uh, thing to happen to a novice learner in the operating room to get nervous and develop a slight tremor. Uh, what I recommend is to stabilize this tip of the needle driver on something. And so here you can see that I've thrown one surgeon's knot. And so if I'm coming around for that second throw and I have a bit of a tremor and the free end is close to the patient's tissue, I might just set it down there on the tissue as long as it's safe. And that way it eliminates that tremor when I grab it. However, if it's up in the air, and I'll try to prop this up in the air as best I can, you obviously can't rest it on the patient's tissue and still be able to grab the free end. So you might just rest it on your other hand as you come into the free end. And that way it eliminates the tremor and allows you to easily grab that free end. And then coming through and laying down that beautiful square knot. And so that's my last technical trip trick of the video, trick six. So that concludes all of my tips and tricks for this video. However, more important than watching this video is to practice it yourself to make sure that you incorporate these the next time that you're in the emergency room or in the operating room. So I recommend that uh, you try to throw at least 10 simple interrupted sutures uh, using the knot tying techniques that we talked about here, all six of them to throw one surgeon's knot followed by four squared knots for each. Thanks so much.